High Notion is. I'm taking a break today from creating lots more exciting Apple shortcuts and automations to show a brand new feature that Notion has just rolled out to everyone, hopefully at this point, which is sub items. This feature allows you to link together items in the same database to record things like subtasks and also dependencies when you're managing your projects. It's not the easiest feature to figure out if you're trying to manage both dependencies and sub items in the same database. So I'm going to show you how you can set this up to make the most of the new functionality without coming up with a design that doesn't work quite as well as it should. So I'll start by showing you tasks and subtasks. If we open up this view, this is another view of the same task database, but this time we have the sub items feature enabled. So when I click on this toggle here, we can see the sub items that are linked to this parent item right here. As you probably noticed, you can also add additional sub items whilst you're inside these toggles and they'll be automatically linked to the parent item, which is pretty handy. So if we wanted to add design assets for app store page, we can do that right there. Set a beginning and end date. And if we open up the parent item right here, we can see we now have that additional sub task just there. So to get started, I'll begin by creating a task database using the Notion API inside this page, just to speed up the whole process there. And this is just gonna have some pretty generic properties in it. We've got assigned, due, and status. The property that you're going to need to create in order to enable sub items in your database is a relation property. And here we just want to link back to the same database because that's the only way that this feature will work for you. And it also makes sense for things like subtasks because obviously you've configured all of your properties to record details about tasks already. You don't want to have a separate related database to store your subtasks in, uh, which you would have to reconfigure every time you change the configuration of your main task database. I would generally switch on these separate directions uh, toggle right here so that you can see the parent tasks and the subtasks uh, when you're looking at a page in this database. And then it doesn't really matter what you call these two properties in terms of which one you make the parent tasks and which one you make the subtasks because it's gonna look exactly the same in the user interface regardless of which order you do those in. But that seems to make the most sense to me. And then if we add that relation, that's created those two new properties for us right there. Now that we've done that, we can go to the three dots next to the new button on this database view and choose sub items. And here we just want to choose the property that we're gonna store our subtasks in. We have the option here to either set this on all new task views or just set on this view. Obviously this feature isn't actually changing the functionality of your database at all. It's just displaying how the contents of that database is displayed. So it's nice that we've got the flexibility there to not show sub items on every single table database view that we create in the future. But I'll set it on all new task views for now. And that's all we need to do there. So now you can see that these names are slightly indented and we have these toggles here, which allow us to start adding sub items for these parent items uh, right from this view if we want to. So if we create task five here and we open up this page, we're now going to see that there's a subtask linked to this main task here, uh, which is the one that we just created. And then if we open up task five, we can see that task five's parent task is of course task one. So that's basically all you need to do to configure your sub items. The other thing you're probably going to want to do though is create a linked database view to display the sub items or sub tasks that are linked to your parent items inside a page template for the database so that when you create a parent item, you can see all of the sub items that are linked to that parent item inside its page and update those nice and easily. So the fastest way to do that is first of all, to copy a link to the database itself, go to the down arrow next to the new button on the database view. And then if we create a new template, we can call this new parent task template. And obviously you just want to name that with something that indicates that it is going to be the template that you apply to your parent items only. 
And then once we've done that, we can make the page full width just to give ourselves a little bit more horizontal space to work with when we're viewing the contents of this database view. Then if we paste the link to the database into here and create a linked view of the database, that's, going, that's the fastest way to add that linked database view to your page. Then we can create a board view, for example, and we probably want to group this by status. So that's worked quite nicely for once. We'll switch on coloring the columns and I'll just reorganize those so that they're grouped just like that. We can choose which properties to display on this database view. So we'll show who the task is assigned to and when it's due, just like that. Next up, we just need to filter this database view based on the relation to the parent tasks. And then we want to select the parent task template, which is obviously the name of the template page that we're inside right here as the filter criteria and add that as an advanced filter just to keep that out of the way and save that for everyone. So what that's gonna do is create a self-referencing filter for us, which will automatically update every time we apply this page template. And this filter will update to pick up the name of the page that this database view is inside so that you automatically only see the subtask linked to your parent task inside this database view. And when you add additional subtasks to this database view, they'll be automatically linked to the parent task as well. Then I'd probably hide the database title and we can add a nice quick label like subtasks there, just to avoid anyone finding themselves in the wrong place by mistake when they're using this database view. And that's it. So if we go back to our task one here, uh, let's open this in full page view and apply that page template that is going to create the view of the subtask database for us. And task five didn't have a status there, so let's just drag that over. Uh, but obviously that shows the subtask right here. And then we can also add additional tasks from this view. And as you can see, that's been automatically linked to this parent task from there for us. The other option that you have got when it comes to viewing your subtask a little bit more easily is first of all, you can customize which properties are displayed for each of these subtasks when they're shown as a relation property here. So we could switch on assigned and status and maybe due as well. So that gives you a nice summary of information there, but you can't actually edit those details from this view here. Even if we have this page open in full page view, clicking on any of those labels will just open the page itself. So if we switch that to show as and then a page section, that's now going to display this list of subtasks right here. And you can actually edit these details now from here and update them nice and quickly. So in some cases, you know, having a link database view inside the page here is going to be overkill and you can just use this option instead. But using link database views here gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of the layout of this list of tasks and obviously giving you the ability to add additional views here, which you can use to visualize and manage your tasks in different formats. So that's everything that you need to know about sub items. The other functionality obviously that we now have access to is this dependencies feature, which is just gonna allow us to link together different items in our database in a timeline view to show the cascading uh, sequence of tasks that need to be completed and which tasks are going to be blocked by other tasks uh, if they're not complete. Now I would recommend adding additional relation properties for your dependencies and enabling items to your database and I'll explain why in a minute but to show you how to do that obviously we're just adding another relation property here we're linking back to the same database again. We're switching on sync in separate directions and we want enables and dependency as our label right here. So if we add that relation there, that gives us a view like that. And now we're ready to switch to the timeline view once we create that. And that gives us a view a little bit like that which by the way, allows us to open and close 
a toggle to see our sub items in this view as well. So that's pretty neat. And if we go to the three dots next to the new button here and go to dependence, then we can select the property that indicates which task the task is enabling. And we can again choose this for all views or just on this view. So I'll set that on all views for now. And that's that. So if we hover our mouse now next to task one, for example, and drag that down to task two, then when we open task two, we can see that it's dependent on task one being completed. As part of this functionality, if task one is scheduled after task two, the task that it's going to enable and that it has to be completed before, then this line is going to show up as a red line instead. Not sure how useful that's going to be, but it's a nice flag that something's gone wrong with your scheduling. Now I'll just switch on a couple more properties for this view just so we can get a better sense of how this would really look. So you probably want assigned and status right there. And that gives you a nice view of your tasks and which tasks need to be completed in order for the next task to be worked on. But we can go one step further here and you probably want to add a flag like this to indicate when a task is blocked. It would be nice if this was built into the feature, but obviously that can be a feature request for the future. In order to set this up, all we need to do is first of all, add a rollup property to this database to check whether or not an enabling task is complete or not. So we're just gonna add a formula property here. We'll call this complete. And this is gonna, just gonna look at the status and see whether or not it's complete. So that will be checked if the status is complete and then if the status is not complete, it will be unchecked. Next up, we can add a rollup property here, which is gonna see whether or not the enabling tasks are complete or not. And there's a couple of different ways that we can format this, but we'll just count the number of incomplete tasks here. So we'll call that incomplete dependencies. And we just wanna choose the dependency property as our relation, we want to choose the complete property from there as our property that will aggregate. And then we just want to count the number of dependencies which are unchecked. And I'll just switch on the a couple more details here so we can see this more clearly. So we know that our dependency here is complete, but if we just change that to incomplete now, then go back to our dependent task, we can see that the incomplete dependencies now is showing as one. So now we can add a formula property to indicate whether or not this is blocked. We'll call that block check. And that would just be number of incomplete dependencies is greater than zero. So this is blocked. We don't really need this additional property in here. We could incorporate this logic into the next formula property that we're gonna create but it's nice to have it there for other uses as well sometimes. So we'll create another property here called blocked. And we'll reference the blocked check. And we'll do if that is true. Writing your formula like this automatically assumes that this criteria is looking for a true value. Even if you don't type the equals true bit. Then we'll do a stop emoji right here and an empty space if there's no blocked items. So now that shows us that icon right there. I would hide all of these uh, sort of admin properties from this page view just so that they don't get in the way at all. And maybe move that blocked property up to there just because it makes more sense in that context. You can also hide the complete property right there. And so now if we go back to our timeline view and go to properties, we can add this blocked formula property right there. And that's gonna give us a nice clear stop sign if the task which this task is dependent on is not yet complete. So if we mark this as complete now, then we're gonna see that stop sign disappear for that task because we're ready to work on it. And once again, we could update the way that these dependencies are displayed. I probably wouldn't add a link database view for these, but we can show this as a page section 
just give ourselves a little bit more space to view and update this content inside, just in case we decide to do that at all as well. Now, I mentioned that I would explain why you don't want to use sub items and dependencies with the same relation properties. Let's go back to the timeline view at the top of the page here and select parent tasks as our dependencies like that. And then if we go back to the tasks uh, view right here, we can link these to the parent task. So we'll do that there. And now we have a nice flow diagram showing that these two tasks feed into this one. But if we then want to say that this task needs to be completed before this task can be completed, when we open up this page, we can see that there's a dependency there on submit to the app store. But also if we go back to the task and subtask view, everything is now a subtask of this main parent task here. Now, I guess there might be some times when you want to have that type of layout so you have a nice cascading view. But these views are a little bit awkward to work with because there's no quick way to toggle every sub item to be displayed in the view. And you might not want to show this as a sub item of this item. Uh, obviously, you can imagine if you kept on linking more and more tasks together like that, you would end up with a very deep tree of nested items uh, underneath your one final parent item. I have, of course, incorporated this functionality into my simple project management system template already. So check that out if you're looking for the foundation of your project management system, something that's fairly easy to set up, but has a lot of the functionality that you're going to need there for you to build on as you customize the system and make it your own. I hope that was helpful. Just let me know if you have any questions at all in the comments. And check back here in the future for more updates about new Notion features, new templates that I'm creating and new automations.